Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, as uh, we said earlier today, we'll be discussing Egyptian-African relations that date back throughout history and uh, Egypt's strategic interest in the whole African continent. Uh, and of course, the role that Egypt has played in the uh, history of many African nations. We are now delighted to be joined over the telephone by our guest, Dr. Abdel Megid Salama, the African relations expert. Dr. Abdel Megid, a very good afternoon to you, sir. Good afternoon, lady. Thank you so much for joining us, doctor. Now, President uh, Abdel Fattah Sisi has participated recently in a number of key African events. Uh, and Egypt, of course, was also keen on holding the second edition of the Aswan Forum for Sustainable Peace and Development, despite the COVID pandemic via video conference. How important, doctor, is it for Africa as a continent and for all the nations to really work together to survive and overcome the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic? Right. This is, this is really a good issue. We have, as Egypt, to concentrate very much on it. Yes. Let me summarize the history of Egypt-African uh, relations. Yes. We, we, for some time, we had a, a, a good old relation, and then when Egypt got occupied in the late 18, 18s and early 19s, it was cut mm. by force to the level that uh, one country like Egypt and Sudan was cut into two countries. And then when President Nasser came back, we restarted yes. uh, on the 60s to have some sort of contacts with African countries. Mm -hmm. Then, due to some political influences, it was cut for some time during the 80s, 90s, and early of this century. Yes. Now, President Sisi restarted the whole situation again. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other side, let me tell you that there are three key points of contact between Virgin Africa and the other mm. uh, world. Yes. We have three key countries in Egypt, which is considered the contact points between mm. uh, the uh, Virgin African countries and the uh, international society. And these three countries, by size is South Africa, number mm. two is Egypt, number three is Morocco. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you can understand, these three societies are absolutely different. Uh, one of them, Morocco, is a French mm. uh, uh, culture. One of them, uh, South Africa, is a multinational culture yes. between uh, uh, UK, Germany, and others mm. and we which we are relatively an independent culture mm -hmm. and uh, the African countries on the other side feel that these three countries are the they are speaking a language which is closer to the local language when I say language I don't mean ABC, I mean as a culture on behavior of technology, behavior of yes. uh, economic relations mm -hmm. and all that. Mm -hmm. So they feel very much mm. happy when we as Egypt uh, came back in the last few years because they feel we are very close to them and yes. then we have relatively an independent uh, culture from other international countries hmm. and that's why they are very much welcoming to uh, to the level that some of them officially they were blaming us hmm. for being far from them for some time mm -hmm. so in basic they are very welcoming us yes. however however hmm. we have to take into consideration that we are speaking about a very dynamic uh, relation yes. and uh, every country or every big economy in this world is very much interested in the uh, what we call virgin africa because mm. of the 
unbelievable uh, uh, way of uh, investments, of uh, a lot yes. of uh, opportunities mm -hmm. for any outsider to right. go and make a real big success. Mm -hmm. So every country in the world, every country of the big communities and mm. big economies are trying to go inside these countries. Mm. And that's why I am saying that we as Egypt, we are counting on doing a very quick steps. Uh, we have to use the uh, steps the government and uh, our top leaders are doing to go and put us in contact with these countries and we should continue and very quickly, very strongly, making quick decisions either as a private economy or as a governmental uh, economy and uh, authorities to uh, not to leave the market open for competition. Yes. Dr. Abdel Megid, I wanted to ask you, uh, uh, what is you know, the, the obligation, or what are rather the obligations of the international community now towards Africa? We've seen uh, President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi calling for the continued coordination with the international community to secure a necessary logistics support and funding, etc., for African countries to face the repercussions of uh, the latest development with regards to the pandemic, especially whether it's economic or health or social uh, sectors that have been affected? Uh, of course, le let's, let's at first start with that mm. every uh, community from all over the world is very interested in the African mm. uh, society or the African countries because yes. of different reasons depending on the uh, advantages they are going to make through yes. this uh, uh, countries or through these uh, communities, local communities. And uh, this is exactly why we have a golden opportunity because uh, the appreciation from the uh, uh, African countries to the Egyptians and Egyptian uh, culture mm. is more favorable because we are not some sort of a colonism type of thing. We are not uh, only trying to get. Uh, no, we are. We are part of the African uh, countries. Yes. We are at the end of the day, which is true. We are African. Absolutely. So, yes, although we are on the far end of the of the continent from outside from the north, but we are part of this continent. Indeed. So, so, right. Yes, doctor. The opportunities will be generated if we concentrate on uh, doing things as what is planned through our, our government and uh, being some sort of a mediator mm. because we speak a multi-language in the way of that we can understand what the international society mm. is offering yes. and we can re-accommodate it to be in the local uh, way of behavior of the other countries. Mm. And this is actually what they had been saying always that you, yes. uh, Egyptians, can understand what the international society is speaking mm. and translating it to a more closer to our uh, uh, our culture. Yes. Uh, uh, so mm. I I believe uh, I'm I'm supporting the government 100 percent in what they are planning, and uh, uh, but and and but we have to be aggressively pushing, mm. not just waiting until the president decides and then we can. Well, no, we have to go uh, ahead, both together immediately. Absolutely. Right. Dr. Abdel Megid Salema, the African relations expert, I'd like to thank you very, very much, sir, for joining us this afternoon and for all your insight. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, a short break, and we'll be right back to continue our edition of Cairo Local Time, so do stay tuned.